Hi, welcome to Theology Therapist. I am Hannah. I am a licensed therapist in Massachusetts with my own private practice. And I like to talk here on my YouTube channel all about spirituality and mental health. And so if you are interested in any of those things, I would invite you to subscribe with the bell notifications. That way you can get notifications with all new video uploads. And from time to time, I do post in the community tab, things like polls, resources, questions, and then updates. And so when you subscribe in the subscriptions tab, that will show up. That's an, one way outside of video episodes and new content that we can stay connected. So let's jump in. I am going to talk about five signs you grew up in a cult. Let's get started. So I've got my coffee, you grab yours and Let's get going. The first sign is that you're afraid to speak your opinion. If you are in a community in which you feel afraid to speak your opinion, what that likely means or points to it is that this community does not allow difference to exist within it. In cult communities, there are things that are allowed and there are things that are not allowed. And this is called milieu control. So really controlling what gets in to the environment and thought reform, right? So this is a way in which thought reform is made possible. Whenever you are in this cult community, there are some things that you can say and there are some things that you cannot say. And likely if you feel afraid to speak your opinion, it's probably because you've picked up on signals from within the community, likely implicit, so likely not obvious, but things that you've just picked up on over time. Now, I'm going to differentiate here. High control religion can have some overlap with cults, but it can be a bit more extreme than the other. Here, I might use those terms interchangeably, like high control religion, fundamentalism, cult, and I'm kind of meaning the same thing because even though there are likely some differences in maybe intensity or extremity, isolation, there are often similarities and the difference is probably gonna be the consequences for like following or not following those rules. So the first one is feeling afraid to speak your opinion. If you are in a, a religious environment or a community and you, feel like you can express doubt or concern or just confusion, then it's probably not a religious cult. Religious cults are like doubt isn't allowed and questioning isn't allowed either. You must have blind faith and you must accept what the leader is telling you no matter what. The second sign that you grew up in a cult is maybe you weren't allowed to celebrate holidays like Halloween or Christmas. Lots of cults or religious cults, they will have things like trunk or treat, or they might even skip mentioning Christmas altogether. I grew up in a fundamentalist Christian church and there was like you could sing the traditional Christmas songs on any other day of the year except on Christmas. So there are these communities that want to di differentiate themselves from the world and there is a complete and total rejection of society, <laughs> putting all these in air quotes. What you experience there is being completely separate from your peers if you were in public school, and maybe other people on your block, like depending on the environment that you grew up in, there was likely some separation there. Uh, and that's really the purpose in doing something like this, is that you are signaling to yourself and others that we are different. So it can stick out this time of year whenever these holidays are kind of com coming up in rapid succession, whether or not you feel like it's okay for you to celebrate any of them. I think that a lot of people who have deconstructed their faith and have come out of high control religion, really like celebrating something like Halloween is 
a huge part of the healing process because it's really taking back and reclaiming something that was set up and promoted or advertised as demonic and taking it back. Sorry, I have a hair. Taking it back and making something fun again and being silly and dressing up and exploring even maybe woo-woo side of spirituality, which some of that can get a little bit more airtime during the Halloween or spooky season or autumnal period. The third sign that you grew up in a cult would be that you were told in your community that your community is the true follower. So for example, uh, in your church, your church said, we are the true Christians. You know, I grew up in a church that said because of this one ancient textual phrase in English, so not even in the ancient text, that this signifies that we are the true Christians. And, you know, the Methodists and the Catholics, don't, don't even get me started on the Catholics, is what they would say. The Methodists and the Lutherans and the Baptists, they're not. This is just so evident of the in-group, out-group mentality that is perpetuated in a cult environment. And it actually makes, uh, it, kind of, it can kind of make life a bit difficult when you leave that because you are used to, conditioned to seeing the world in a black and white or us versus them way. And it really does make a huge difference in making friends afterwards or in just like feeling judgmental or thinking you're right or all of that way of being in the world is examples of us versus them or in group versus out group make it difficult to really be in the world outside of that cult community because you're living in such an extreme reality that you're going to come up against, come into conflict with the reality that you are meeting. I think the, this aspect of finding yourself in a cult is just so problematic because you are pitting yourself against the other people in your religious group who identify with the same religious identity. Instead of pulling together, banding together, or finding commonality, or trying to be in community, building that human bond, we are separating, dividing, differentiating. And that's one of the reasons that this is so problematic, whether you're still in the cult or not, is because it conditions you to think in terms of separating, dividing, and and like combative almost. Okay, the fourth sign is that your actions as a teenager could ruin God's plan for you for the rest of your life. If you grew up in a cult, you probably know what I'm talking about. You were told that God has a plan for your life and it's X and this and this and this, right? And that it, your actions as a teenager, for example, especially like early on, those determine the path that you walk on. So if you actually really think about the the logic and the philosophy here, I, I would say it's a fairly flawed philosophy because if this is determined, then how is it possible to deviate from that, right? But what happens is this message is so strongly promoted in the community that whether you're in a high control religious group or a cult, you learn that actions, no matter big or small, have severe consequences. And that your choice of going to prom or not, or dating this person or not, or kissing this person or not, could impact your life from here on out and into the next one. So what that creates is perfectionism. And it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be so tidy and like things are 
need to be like straight and perfect and it's not really that kind of perfectionism. It's the constant need for validation and for reassurance that you are right and that you are doing things right. The impact of that is that over time, the standard grows and the consequences increase and the stakes get higher and the toll on your system is great because you are constantly at every turn trying to make sure that you are not ruining God's plan for the rest of your life. The fifth sign about how to tell if you grew up in a cult is if you talk about mental health or mental illness, you'll be discouraged from seeking treatment and probably told to pray about it. There is this terrible, I would say, this terrible tendency in religious cults to discourage and downplay mental health, mental illness, psychology, because it's seen that God is really the thing that can heal those. Those are really not seen as like physical, medical, ha mental health happenings, but that doesn't really exist. But what it is, is like attacks from the devil or from evil forces. And that what you need to do is pray enough or be a good enough, whatever kind of religious person you are in order to be freed of depression, anxiety, panic, OCD. Um, I mean this really even just about anxiety, not to mention severe and persistent mental illness. And when I say severe and persistent mental illness, I mean schizophrenia, schizoaffective, some personality disorders, bipolar disorders. Anxiety thing is something that probably most of us deal with, cope with in our life or depression something that at various points over the course of a lifetime, a lot of us might have experience with. One telltale sign of whether or not your church is a cult is if you mention something like anxiety or depression or o OCD and you are told to pray about it, to have hands laid on you, to seek healing, and instead of seeking treatment for that. Because for all of those things, there are really effective treatments out there. All right, that wraps us up for today. Those are five signs to know whether or not you grew up in a call. I am excited to be back. This is my first long form video back in a while. And I'm really excited to sit down and film this for you today. If you like this video or this content, think about giving it a like or a thumbs up or subscribing to the channel that really helps my channel and allows me to make more content that you're looking for that's helpful for you. If there is something that you want to see me talk about, go ahead and leave a comment and I will try to mix that into the rotation in content planning coming up. I have, before we go, three announcements in ways to stay connected. Since I'm coming back after a big break, I wanted to just communicate some ways that we can stay connected. And so one I mentioned at the beginning of the video, you can subscribe and uh, check out the community tab where uh, there might be polls, resources, updates, etc. from time to time. The other couple of ways that um, I've thought about that I've been working on in the last few months that we can stay connected is you can join the newsletter that I send out. Um, that will be, I'm kind of trying to figure it out, that will be somewhere between weekly, bi-weekly, and we'll be talking about all things spirituality, mental health, and life in the middle. The newsletter is number one place to get connected. Next up, curious, after watching this video or any of my other videos, I have on my website a free quiz. You can take this quiz to see if you have religious trauma and there are some resources that I'll follow up with you afterwards. And then soon coming up, I will have a masterclass to share with you. It'll be a free one hour training 
I'll have more de details to share with you soon. And so you can check out the description of this video for all links. All right, that's all I have today. It was so good to be back. I'll see you in the next one.